today I've come for a little walk. I'm gonna attempt my hand at GoPro photography. Now, uh, this video is gonna tie nicely into my video that I'm doing next week about a uh, follow-up to my most viewed video, which is the GoPro battery fix video. And um, yeah, I thought I'd do a follow-up to that video next week. So this video will tie in with that. Can you take decent photos with the GoPro? We're about to find out, I think. So what we're gonna do is have a little wander down. I am walking down here. The canal path is that way, but I know people walk their dogs over this side of the river, so uh, over this side of the canal. So I'm gonna walk a bit further down that way and see what I can find. There's some geese and stuff on the side of the canal. Uh, see if we can take some decent photos. Come on guys, let's get going. Let's see if we can get a picture of the geese with going up towards the uh, up that way. I've got the geese in the foreground and then I've got the canal in the background, some nice trees in the background. Um, yeah, let's try and get this. Just got hissed at by a goose, so I've got to be a bit careful. Uh, they're not particularly bothered, but they're there anyway. I'm a bit disappointed that you can't shoot in RAW whilst in linear mode. I'd like to have that linear mode so it doesn't look so fisheye. Unfortunate, but I'm going to shoot in wide in RAW. I've got um, Pro Tune on, shutter 1 over 125. Uh, auto white balance. ISO minimum is 100, ISO max is 800. I've got the sharpness down because I don't want it too sharp. I don't want it to look like over sharpened so it takes a bit of the quality away from it as well in uh, a flat color so i can color grade this after yeah we're going to um chuck these photos into the lightroom after to see what you can do with them um, that's why i wanted to shoot in raw so let's get some photos of the geese if they don't attack me uh see what we can get <laughs> So I changed the um, I changed the shutter speed to auto so it could pick the right shutter speed for me because uh, it's just coming out far too exposed. So yeah, use the auto settings, but I've shot it in a flat color mode so I can flat color mode so I can have a go at editing after. Where am I going? Can you not go down that way? It's obviously very wide and you can't zoom in in the mode that I'm in at least anyway. The shots aren't going to be as um, I don't know, the composition of the shot isn't going to be as you want it, I suppose. Um, sort of for landscape photography, I can imagine it'd be quite good because the camera itself is quite decent, obviously, you know, the, the quality of the GoPro camera. But yeah, again, the delay with the, the shutter, and that is something that's going to, that I'm, something I'm going to talk about in the next video is the sort of a delay with the software. It's not quite, uh, it doesn't take it instantly, it's not like a proper shutter, it's sort of a digital. Uh, snapshot of a video more than a actual shutter click um, and then it takes a couple of seconds to process so that's the sort of the basis of next of the next video about the GoPro so we'll uh, we'll get more into that next time in the meantime a bit of a walk see if, what photos I can find what compositions I can discover and enjoy the scenery uh, one thing I have found is that you can get quite close to the subject it's almost like a macro lens um, I can get like really, really close up. Uh, it's probably in focus about there, so I don't know, probably three or four centimeters close to the subject. Um, obviously, it's very wide, and you still get some of the background in. So, yeah, I'm taking photos like this, and it's you can get something very close in the foreground, and then still get like a nice wide view of the sky as well, even when I'm pointing down like that. I'm still getting a good court of the sky in, so something to bear in mind, it's quite cool. Uh, there's one thing that I haven't thought about up until just right now, this very, very second, is that, of course, the GoPro is waterproof, so that just adds another cool dimension of stuff you can take. So um, we've got the canal, I'm gonna try and take a couple of photos of the canal with half water, half background, see what you can create. Obviously, this thing isn't gonna get destroyed, it's obviously waterproof, make sure all your doors are shut and secure properly and make sure you rinse it off afterwards, but yeah, waterproof. 
Why didn't I think about that before? Let's see what I can get. Well, not entirely sure how they've come out. Yeah, wash the GoPro, wash the hands. What we're gonna do is carry on. We've got some nice reeds over in the corner there. We're gonna get that side. Maybe have a little bit of a further walk down there. And then I've heard that in the field over there, if I go back that way and walk towards a certain place, that there's some poppy fields over there. So we're gonna carry on. We've got no rush. Finished work early today and we've got plenty of time. So let's go, uh, let's go exploring a little bit. Rope swing there. Shallow. Nah. <laughs> Okay, let's get some sun on me. Right. I'm gonna really think about where the light is. That's one of the, the real challenges when it comes to photography is figuring out the light and videography for that matter. I'm always trying to get the light if I film myself from this way. Not so good. But if I face my camera towards the sun, better, nicer picture. So yeah, take those took those photos again. Now, now we'll go and find the puppies. Whew. It is warm today as well. Overcast, but warm. There's a uh, video coming on this ND filter as well soon because it's the only one that I've found that's half decent that can fit the thread on my kit lens on the M50. Um, I stupidly stupidly sold the Sigma 18-35 a while back to fund buying a new computer and I've been regretting it ever since because it has a good lens and it's expensive uh, expensive to buy back so uh, yeah saving up at the moment hard to try and get the Sigma plus I'm desperate absolutely desperate for some kind of electric vehicle like along here and around the surrounding area where I live a one wheel would be absolutely brilliant um, but they're expensive so it's gonna take me a while to get one of those and this is a you know very rich patron that's watching this that wants to donate some money for me to buy a one wheel I'll uh, make some wicked content with it you can, you can be sure of that I've took some photos with the M50 and the GoPro to see the GoPro this little bad boy this is a, don't get me wrong this is a brilliant camera but is it for photography maybe maybe it could be well just see me fall over then maybe for certain kinds of photography but not for obviously not for professional photography you're not gonna go out with this and take it to a client and say here's my camera <laughs> Yeah, that's it. This GoPro. Yeah. No, no honestly, it's my camera. I'm, I'm what? I'm fired. Right, okay. Let's get back into the office, have a little bit of chat, take a look at the photos, see what they look like after editing in Lightroom. Let's go. Right guys, it's the following day. I've edited all the photos, I've done everything I need to do, and I'm gonna compare the two, the M50 to the GoPro. Compare the two, see what they look like. I never did make it to the poppy fields, I couldn't find them. I'm having no luck with poppy fields this year, but hopefully I can do some more research over the coming weeks and months and I can find out where they are. So looking at the first photo, uh, the GoPro against the Canon M50 on the right hand side. Now, they look, Okay, obviously the color is a lot better in the Canon. The contrast is a little bit deeper. I have edited the GoPro to what I usually edit photos with in Lightroom. It looks okay. It's obviously not as good as the Canon, but 
it's that's a decent photo compared to the one on the right hand side it's not exactly the same composition wise but it's not too bad moving on to the next one so it was like a little shot down the path from the floor line gopro on the left again the grass isn't quite as saturated it doesn't look quite as colorful but the blacks are a little bit uh, darker a bit more prominent on the canon m50 so but Again, similar looking photographs, um, and I've edited both of these in Lightroom, GoPro and the Canon photo, so to how I would usually edit photos, and yeah, looks okay. Okay, with the selfie, obviously, this is where you're gonna see um, a bit of a difference. I think the, the Canon is very contrasty, very the colors are very bright. That's with me editing it, of course. The GoPro just still looks a little bit flat, and with the selfie, with the sun behind me, I got this sort of strange, sort of rainbow effect just over my head there you can see the arch and I couldn't get rid of that unless I turned the saturation all the way down uh, sorry the brightness all the way down and uh, that just made the photo look a bit dark then but um, the angle is a little bit different but apart from that yeah the photos turned out not too bad the photos in the vlog that I've already put in were okay so it's it's going to be one of those things that you could take out if you want to take out a smaller camera a really compact camera you can by all means use your gopro to take photos so what did we learn we learned that it's an okay camera if i was going to give you some tips um, my first tip would be careful of your fingers in the shots i took loads of photographs yesterday where my finger was in the shot because the camera angle is so wide um, if you want to shoot in that raw mode so you can edit afterwards the camera is so wide that i was getting my finger and my hands in certain photographs so just be careful of that uh, i felt like some of the photos were just a little bit underexposed i was obviously using all auto settings for the photographs in the settings just made it a little bit easier uh, then i was shooting in wide and raw so i could edit after rather than messing about exposure and color and stuff during shooting because with the gopro you have to go into the menu um, and it's just a little bit fiddly with the menu itself is a bit slow and so it's just easier to shoot auto um, and I felt like some of the photos were a little bit underexposed. Like I said before, I should shoot in raw, wide mode and this allows you to chuck the photos into Lightroom on your phone or on your computer and edit them to how you like them to be edited for your Instagram stories or Instagram photos or anything like that. And what advantage it does have is that obviously it's waterproof so you can chuck it in all sorts of creative places so just get creative with the photographs chuck it out there see what you can see what you can create with this camera that can be thrown anywhere it's not indestructible but it's a lot more less delicate than say your mirrorless camera or your smartphone would be so yeah that is one massive advantage it's got over normal cameras so overall, I hope this helped. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button, press the bell so you don't miss any uploads coming up soon. And uh, catch you on the next one. I'm off to take some more photos. See you soon.